talk again from my perspective. I actually sit on uh, a number of boards, as I indicated, and um, in general, where we used to have board meetings once a month or sometimes once a quarter, I would tell you we're having our board meetings every week or every two weeks now. And I'm sitting on York University, so uh, Peter would appreciate that. Lots of work going on with York, WSIB, as I said. Uh, and then I have two other boards. And I will tell you to a T, all four boards are super concerned about security. And it's not just ransomware, but it's all the things we've talked about. It's pushing out laptops to homes. It's people using being remote and not sure how to use remote. Um, you heard Andrew talking about pushing things out to the iPads for her for her pilots. I mean, you know, th there's a risk there. So the board is meeting every week, and this is just one topic, but it is on every single topic every week of our board meeting. We're talking about how do you do audits in this world? How do you know when you're in fraud situations, you know, let alone video conferencing? So um, very high topic for, for uh, organizations. I think it's fair to say that sort of end user support has been sort of poor because of, yes, we enabled laptops. Yes, we gave them VPN. Uh, if we had a little bit extra money, we might've even VDI'd them, right? We, we had an ability to do that, but we measured that in the hundreds, not in the thousands or tens of thousands. Uh, and I think the term I hear mo most often now is diversification, right? We've added cloud to our data center and mainframe and partnering environment. Now we need to add uh, endpoint or edge as part of that requirement. So the same regulations, the same governance, the same security, the same patch management, all has to be at the edge as much as it's in the data center in the cloud. Um, and then when you look at the edge themselves, remember we still have those distinct parties between the information workers and the task workers. The task workers are susceptible to the bad guys, right, in many ways. You are going to trust somebody more, uh, social engineering wise, when they call you at home versus when they call you in the office. And therefore we have to not just create sort of hardened technology for them to work, but the actual education it takes to understand things like ransomware and social engineering when they're in fact at home to do that. So we've got to think about that diversification of across wherever data is created and wherever applications are used from edge to the data center to third parties to the cloud as one sort of end-to-end -end continuum. Uh, and the last thing I'd say, you, you also have to think of sort of data as a separate lens in many ways than the applications, right? Uh, I might use data for the purpose of data science. I might use data for just MIS, uh, and where I might use data for things like simple uh, syncing and sharing, right? Where I'm collaborating on a document. Well, that has a different set of security concerns and a different set of data protection concerns, a different set of backup and, and recovery concerns. So I've got to think about that sometimes differently than just a simple VDI on the desktop. People are the biggest source of vulnerability. So we, with that in mind, we, we will look at three main areas. What we, governance and compliance. So how do we ensure for providing sense, mandatory sense training, doing some phishing tests on a regular basis within the companies, doing some yearly penetration testing too as well. A second, a second area is really as we all know, it's increasing the shortage of skills of a security personnel. We, as we know, it's very difficult uh, to find the, the right skills when it comes to security personnel, but also, and also ensuring that we have the right tools to understand to, to what was mentioned earlier, to understand really why and how we are processing data, um, understanding all the processing activities, the assets, and, and ensuring the, that we have end, um, end, um, endpoint detection and response. So for that, we, we've put a few place in, uh, solution in place called One Trust. Uh, it's starting globally. Uh, it's not everywhere yet, but we, we replaced also um, Bundlack with Sophos. Um, we, the third point too as well, it's the integration of endpoint, like we mentioned before, endpoint data 
into the broader security infrastructure. So how do we implement it secure off? We're looking at uh, VPN and firewall on the cloud. We are many, we just finished a pilot um, uh, looking at between two solutions. Um, and uh, another thing that is quite usually not always the uh, uh, is the, the endpoint encryption. This is something that we're focusing a lot this year that was uh, mentioned in our strategies because that's been the uh, uh, not always the uh, focus on. So that's another area. Um, so really in, in summary, as it, governance and compliance, um, increasing of uh, the skills um, with really the security and the tools and and really integration of the endpoint data into the the, sec the infrastructure the security infrastructure um i'll actually build on edith's point um for us i think endpoint security has been a, a key component as well specifically uh, with users working remotely um, we're looking at citrix and vdi a little bit more closer uh, no before has been one that we enabled uh, back in December, uh, but uh, that's uh, proactive phishing campaigns that you can launch across different departments. You can customize them. You can send them on behalf of Ernest Solomon as an email and see if your team would actually respond. So that uh, we're going to be launching that uh, in the month of June as well as a phishing campaign. We just did a first test of it now. And we had a 100% click rate, uh, believe it or not. So uh, that was just a, between a test between five individuals. Um, also, um, you know, as part of Office 365, report a spam button that's there. So it automatically gives the ability for users to just click on it very quickly. And the, the email is quarantined and, and, and uh, taken away from the mailbox. So uh, looking at that as well, and then I, I think just one additional thing that I am actually looking at this point in time is just because of the uncertainty of returning back into the office. Now we're kind of contained within two floors uh, at the Eden Center Tower. Now actually even just looking down with USB lockdown and also shutting down physical ports into the office. So, you know, you don't have anybody who penetrates physically into the office and able to plug in a USB and, and do other magic behind it. So um, looking at that as an option and obviously will require a process that as anybody who goes into the office later on, will have to open up a ticket with the IT service desk to kind of re-enable the, uh, the port.